Sitebulb's standalone structured data testing tool allows you to extract and validate structured data markup for a single page or code snippet, allowing you to quickly iterate until you have your markup perfect. Located in the Tools drop down menu, the structured data testing tool offers a simple interface with two input options fetch a URL or enter a code snippet. Let's start off with a really simple example Sitebulb's About page. Simply type or paste the URL, then click Run Test. Sitebulb will go off to fetch the page, render it using headless Chromium, then extract the structured data found. You'll be presented with two tabs, Results and HTML. The HTML tab shows the extracted HTML so that you can see the schema markup in situ. An important thing to note is that Sitebulb is rendering the page, so this view is of the rendered HTML after JavaScript has fired. It is the equivalent of examining inspect element rather than view source. We'll return to this view later. On the results tab, there are three ways you can view the extracted structured data. The first is by examining all the search features triggered on the page. The second shows the root schema entities with nesting. And the third shows all extracted entities in an unnested form. The structured data is validated against the guidelines Google published for rich results eligibility and against the schema.org specification. What we are looking to do is identify any errors or warnings so we can investigate and then fix them. In this example, we have no errors or warnings, so let's look at an example where we do. Here, you can see an error flagged on the product markup. Opening out the view allows you to see the extracted properties and search for the error. The red warning message indicates the error, and the little G symbol shows that it is in conflict with Google's documentation. The page is missing a required property of either Offers, Review or Aggregate Rating. Scrolling down, you can see that these are not present. And you can even verify in the Extracted HTML tab. They are not there. If you want to better understand the issue, click through to the Google documentation page so you can explore the required properties. In this case, you would be able to fix the error by adding at least one of those required properties. Now let's take a look at the difference between errors and warnings with another example. On this page, there are two search features found, breadcrumb and product. Whilst there are no errors, there are two warnings flagged for the product. Again, you can open the panel up to explore what these warnings are. The warnings are shown in yellow, and you can see when you scroll down that the wording says missing recommended property with optional in brackets. This distinction is important. While the red errors relate to required properties, the yellow warnings only relate to recommended properties. From the documentation page, you can see that the required properties are the ones you must have. If you don't, the feature will not be eligible for rich results. The recommended properties should be considered opportunities. If you have the data, it is recommended that you include it, as it may result in a more complete, enhanced rich result. However, if you do not, it does not block eligibility for rich results. Finally, let's look at a more complicated example and iteratively fix it within the tool itself. Instead of fetching a URL, this time let's use a prepared code snippet. 
This is a snippet of JSON LD code where the structured data describes a web page about a chocolate brownie recipe. This time there are four search features identified and one of them has a number of errors. Opening out the recipe feature, you can see that there is a red Google error here and scrolling down, seven schema errors, which are indicated by the little S schema icon. These schema errors state that an invalid format has been used for maths. Again, you can click the blue links to open supporting documentation. This one opens the schema docs for nutrition information. The issue in this case is with mass, so let's see the correct format required. OK, so it should just be the number and then the unit. So 40 G instead of 40 grams carbohydrates. Let's fix this in the HTML. Once this is done, you can retest and verify that the issue has been resolved. Excellent. So there's just the one Google error to fix now. As before, to get to Google's Docs, you need to click the link up here. Here, the claim is that the property recipe yield is missing. The required properties are down here, and at first glance, it looks like only image and name are required. But let's dig a little deeper and check out the recipe yield property itself. Here you can see that this property is actually required if nutritional information is specified, as in nutrition information. So the docs tell you what you need to add in order for the markup to meet the requirements. Let's copy this and add it to the HTML. And let's say this recipe makes 24 brownies. Now, you just need to retest to verify that the issue has been resolved and all the red errors have gone. Of course, you can follow a similar process for the warnings and optionally add those too if the data is available. These examples show how SiteBuild's standalone structured data testing tool can be used for code validation one page at a time. Try SiteBuild's structured data audit to carry out validation across every single page on your website in one go. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel for more demos, walkthroughs and Q&As.